Uh, we are continuing to fight the virus on two major fronts, as we have described. Firstly, into, in controlling the outbreak in the migrant worker dormitories, and secondly, to control the outbreak in the broader community. For the migrant worker dormitories, the situation in the purpose-built dormitories is stabilizing, but we are still taking time to clear the many other dormitories we have in Singapore, especially the smaller factory-converted dormitories. So each day, the numbers are still high, partly because of our active and aggressive testing regime, which we have put in place, and we are continuing to test more migrant workers every day. So we expect to still see these numbers for a few more weeks before they stabilize. But uh, our strategy is working and we are making progress day by day in clearing these dormitories. And we are also very mindful of the people who are working in the dormitories and also the community care facilities. In recent days, we have picked up a few cases of uh, people working in these settings who have become infected. And so we are not only, we, ha we already have precautions in these settings, but we are doing more now by also testing the workers who are working in these settings, not just once, but again, periodically, just to ensure that these workers can do their work in a safe environment. At the community level, um, you know the numbers that we have been reporting every day, they have continued to, they have been coming down. Um, I think the average in the past week was about 10 a day. The number of unlinked cases have also come down. And importantly, uh, if you look at the surveillance program which we have put in place to test um, cases in our clinics with prolonged acute respirat respiratory illness, those number of cases have also been coming down, which suggests that the number of unlinked cases in our community is lower than it used to be uh, in the recent weeks. So we are making progress because of the circuit breaker, and we should continue to do our part to comply with the measures for the rest of the circuit breaker period. Uh, we should remain vigilant and not take any chances. We are all of you would know that we have made some announcements on some easing of measures from the 12th of May onwards. But that should not be an opportunity for us to go out and more frequently. Right? For the businesses themselves, first of all, do not be in a rush to reopen your business and neglect the important safe management practices that you have to put in place first. In fact, if the safe management practices are not ready, then please do not just rush to reopen the business on the 12th of May because our inspectors will be going around to check and to enforce. And if you are not ready, if the business premise doesn't have the necessary precautions and safeguards in place, then we may have to ask you to stop work anyway and there will be penalties imposed. For indiv individuals, Again, there is no need to rush to go out to patronise these businesses on the 12th of May. I know some people may not have had a haircut for some time, but there is no need to rush to go out to have a haircut on the 12th of May. There will be time to do so. Right? So let's pace ourselves. Don't rush to go out uh, quickly just because of the easing of some restrictions. The circuit breaker is still in place and we should make the most of this next three weeks and more through the circuit breaker period to bring our community numbers down as much as possible. In the meantime, uh, let us also, as we are focusing on today, in today's uh, press conference, do everything we can to protect our seniors because they are the most vulnerable group. So if you are living with an elderly person in the same household, then encourage that person not to go out and try to run errands on their behalf. If you are not living together, but your parents or grandparents are uh, living um, separately from you, then make use of this opportunity to stay in touch with them remotely, call them. A physical separation doesn't mean that they have to be emotionally isolated. Um, Mother's Day is coming on Sunday, for example. So remember to call your mother, your grandmother, and 
use this opportunity to be in touch with them. Don't visit them because that would be a, an activity that we don't want to encourage because whenever you visit, have physical contact, that can bring some risk to the elderly. But do call them, get, uh, check on them regularly and continue to show our appreciation to our seniors because we all know that during this circuit break breaker period, many of them do feel isolated because they are away from their children and grandchildren. So we, as I said just now, have about three more, three, three over weeks before the circuit breaker period uh, comes to an end on the 1st of June. Uh, we will, as we have described, um, look, continue to monitor, assess the situation in thinking about what to do post 1st June. Whatever the um, decision or whatever happens in the coming days or weeks, it is clearly not going to be the case that after 1st of June, everything will be lifted and we will go back to status quo ante. That is clearly not going to happen. So all of us have to be mentally prepared that the scenario of post 1st June will continue to be one of gradual, calibrated easing. Exactly how much we will have to see depending on the assessment of the situation in the coming days and weeks. And as we assess that and are ready, we will let Singaporeans know more details about how we can, um, about the exact nature of the restrictions or the easing that one can expect post 1st June. But in the meantime, like I said earlier, let us continue to hunker down and do everything we can to stay home, minimize our contacts with others, and make the most of the circuit breaker period.